All right. Good morning, uh, or afternoon, or evening, or whenever, late night, whenever you uh, have gotten on here. Uh, this is actually my third take on this. I've messed it up twice already. I don't usually do this twice already, uh, but it happens. Okay, uh, these are some more word problems. I talked in math class yesterday. You're going to have word problems on Tuesday and Wednesday, test on Thursday and Friday. So this is a continuation. We will be continuing to use the part, part, whole, and the tape diagrams to help us out, okay? If you can't read this, that is okay. Open up the form that is in the homework there. Open it up so you can see it in a, a tab side by side so you can follow along. You'll need pencil and paper so you can write this out for sure. Um, Cameron and his four friends buy snacks for an after school party. They buy chips for $7.95, sodas for $6.45, and some candy for $4.35. If they split the cost equally, how much will each friend pay? Okay. So the first thing I need to know is if they're going to split it equally, they have to know the total amount that they're going to split it equally. So we're going to start that with a tape diagram. And I know they're buying chips, uh, sodas, and candy. The chips were $7.95. Those sodas were $6.45. And the candy was $4.35. Now then, this are three parts, part, part, part equals whole. That's fine. Or add these two parts and now you have two parts. So part, part, whole. This is going to equal something, right? And then I'm going to draw another tape diagram about the same size right underneath because I know that this total price is going to be split equally among how many people? How many people are going to split this? Well, I have to go back and read closely. It says Cameron and his four friends. Okay, If I'm counting along, that's Cameron and his four friends. That's a total of five people. So I need to make sure that I split this into five roughly equal parts. How much will each friend pay? That's this amount right here. Okay. I'm going to help you out a little bit on this one because this division, I want to do it in a box method with you. I want you to follow along in a box, okay? So, $7.95, I need the total first, $6.45 and $4.35, okay? I need a total, so I need to add these up. I have my decimal points lined up nice and neatly here, and that means that I can add. There's 10, 17, 1, that's 8, 14, 18, and I bring my decimal point straight down. $18.75, that's this right here. And now I need to spread that, I need to divide it equally. I'm gonna to go to another screen, we know it's $18.75. I need $18.75 divided by five friends. Here's my box now. Okay, I need one, two, three, four columns. One digit per column. Remember, one, eight, seven, five. And I'm going to put my decimal point in here, too, so I don't forget. In fact, I can put it right up there right now so I don't forget it. Okay? And I'm dividing by five. Remember, I'm turning this into a multiplication problem. Something times five gets me close to one without going over. And in this case, the only thing I can do is zero. If I have one marble, I can't make any groups of five. So remember, I do this, bring my one up and over. Now then, how many times will five go into 18? Something times five gets me close to 18. Well, that's three. Three times five is 15. So leaves me three left over, which I bring up. Something times 5 gets me close to 37. Well, that is 7. 7 times 5 is 35. That leaves me 2 left over. 2 comes up again also. Something times 5 gets me close to 25. That, of course, is 5. 5 times 5 is 25. And that leaves me with 0. Okay? So... How much will each friend pay? Each friend will pay $3.75. I 
I did the first one for you. It could not possibly be easier. But I certainly hope you're writing this down because this is important. The process is important. Okay? Next one. Thomas paid $50 for a box of file folders for his office. There were 100 folders in the box. He said the cost of each folder was five cents or a nickel. Five cents. Do you agree that the cost of each folder is five cents? What equations could you use to solve? Well, I need to understand the problem. I need to set this problem up. Okay. And I can set it up with part, part, whole. I can look again. I can try again. Let's see. Or maybe a tape diagram or something. Let's see. Paid $50. That's the whole. And there are 100 folders in the box. He said the cost of each was a nickel. So that would be like folder number one, folder number two, folder number three, folder number four. This would be a lot of folders, folder number five, right? Let's just put in some dots. 100 folders, and each one costs a nickel. Five, five. I'm going to write five in there instead of the .005, right? So now then, if I wanted to know if this was correct, did he pay five cents, what are some different equations? Okay. If I wanted to figure this out, I would take like five cents plus five cents plus five cents plus five cents plus five, all the way up, how many times? hundred times, interesting. I think about maybe double checking. Well, if I have a hundred fold or fifty dollars or hundred folders, I want to know how much per folder. Okay. So you're going to have to do some thinking on this. I will give you a hint. Equations. There's more than one on this problem. Ooh, this one takes a little while. We may be here a while. Uh, Sue bought 12 yards of fabric for $4 per yard to make dog beds. She uses two yards of fabric for each bed and sells them for $17.50, that's not bad, per bed. How much profit will she earn if she sells all the beds? Well, this is an interesting word right here, profit. Okay. Profit is the money you have left over after you pay for the materials and labor. Okay. The labor, there's no labor. She's not paying herself anything other than the profit. So the total, okay, total is made up of two parts. You have the materials, right, and the profit. She's going to make some money. The problem is she already paid for the materials. So the difference between the total amount of money that she makes and the materials, that's her profit. Okay. Uh, sometimes in, you'll see the total, you'll see it as net. Net. The net amount earned. Okay. The net uh, is the total amount. But to find out how much she's actually going to put back in her pocket, you have to subtract the materials cost. Okay, so this is our part, part whole. The materials plus the profit would be the total amount that she's going to make. Okay, so let's see, what can we find out from this information? Um, she bought 12 yards of fabric, $4 per yard to make a dog bed. She uses two yards of fabric for each bed and sells them for $17.50. How much profit will she earn? Well, let's see. I need to know the materials. Okay? And the question is the profit. So I bet if I can find the materials, 12 yards, $4 per yard, I bet I can also find the total. And if I subtract those, find the difference, and that will give me the, pro the profit. So let's go about finding uh, the materials. Okay. 
She bought 12 yards of fabric for $4 per yard. Okay, 12 yards. I can cut this up into 12. One, two, three, four, all right, all the way up to 12. And it's $4 per yard. So that would be four times the 12, right? That's my 12 yards. So four times 12, that looks like $48 in materials. She spent $48 in materials, all right? Okay, uh, what about the total? Okay, the total, okay, for each bed, she sells them for $17.50. We need to figure out how many beds did she sell. Well, if she used two yards of fabric for each bed and she had a total of 12 yards of fabric, how many beds can she make out of 12 yards? Yeah, 12 divided by two, all right, 12 yards total. Two yards per, that leaves me a total of six beds, right? Six beds. So to find the total, I need the six beds times the cost per bed, right? And the difference between these two, right, part, part, whole, I now know the whole, that's my total, and I know one part, that's the material, that means I can find the other part, the profit, okay? That's on you. That's on you. You can find those other numbers, okay? Uh, for a field trip, the school bought 50 sandwiches for $4.60 each. And 40 bags of chips for $1.25 each. How much did the school spend in all? Well, this one's pretty easy, part, part, whole. You've got chips and sandwiches equals the total amount. So I need to figure out how much was spent on chips, how much was spent on sandwiches, and I can add those together, right? Part, part, whole. Part plus a part equals a whole. Right? So the chips, it was 40 bags times $1.25 per bag. Okay. Well, if you're on a calculator, that's pretty easy. But let's see if we can figure this out. We haven't done... We haven't done that. But we have done some things that could make that possible for us already the things that we've done. So let's see if we can't figure this out. I'm gonna rewrite it. Most people don't like them written horizontally. I'm gonna write it horizontally. $1.25 times 40 or one and 25 hundredths times 40. Again, we haven't done that. But if you know your properties for multiplication, we can break this 40 apart into something that's going to help us. What about this? 4 times 10. Well, yeah, 4 times 10 is 40. And we haven't talked about it, but our properties of multiplication says that it's commutative, says it's Commutative means I can change the order. Uh, multiplication is also associative. I could change who I associate with. I could change the parentheses. But I don't need to change the parentheses. But I'm thinking that maybe if I change the order, what if I did this? What if I did 1 and 2500 times 10? times 4. What I've done, I could do multiples of 10, right? I need to shift those digits around that decimal point. Values getting larger as I'm multiplying. 
okay? And then I multiply by a single digit, and we've done that, okay? We've done that. So I think you can work this out, okay? So that's chips and sandwiches, all right? 50 sandwiches for four dollars and sixty cents each and this can be broken apart very very similar to that the four dollars and sixty cents times fifty and let's break up that fifty I don't know who that was for but I don't believe it was for me I don't think I have to go to the office not in trouble yet today so four dollars and sixty cents times fifty, right? And I can break that up into something that I'm more comfortable with. Fifty is equal to ten times five, so I can replace that. Okay. You solve these and put them together, right? Okay. Okay. Uh, ooh, interesting. Interesting. Now. Last year, we left uh, school, COVID, uh, before we really got to the geometry, before you got to area and perimeter, um, probably with Mr. Board. So uh, we're going to do talk a lot of, about um, area, talk about perimeter. We're also going to talk a little bit about a rectangle, what those things are. Okay. It says the area of a rectangle is 28 meters squared. If the length of the rectangle is 7 meters, what is the perimeter? I'm going to draw a rectangle. I think we're familiar with this. However, there are some specific things about this rectangle that will help us solve this problem. I know that the length of it, those are going to be the same. And I also know that the widths have to be the same. So for a rectangle, the lengths have to be the same and the widths have to be the same. Okay. Now then, that takes care of rectangle. Let's talk about area and perimeter. Well, area you should be familiar with because area, we know about area model, it's length times width. Okay, To find the area, just like an area model, I would take the top number, sorry, I would take this number up here, say it was 6 and 5, I would say an area model, and the area would be 30. Well, that's close to 28. That's not going to help us a whole lot. But area, okay, an area of a rectangle is length times width. Length times width. Sometimes I do it with cursive letters like that so that I don't get confused with the L, is that an L or one, okay, or a capital L. So sometimes I'll do an L with the cursive and then W. Air equals length times width, this being the length and this being the width. I should be consistent because I used a capital L over here and W over here, so I need to do the same over there, length times width. All right. The area now, they give us the area equals 28 meters. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to replace this word area with 28 meters, square meters. And I'm also going to replace the length, okay? The length I know is 7. Here's some more L's over here. Let's replace these L's also with sevens. Okay? It's the same rectangle. It's the same length. Okay? So I'm trying to figure it out. So to find the perimeter, now let's talk about perimeter. We've done everything we can with area. Let's talk about perimeter. The perimeter is when I walk all the way around the perimeter, the outside of something. So if I were to start right here, the perimeter would mean I'd have to go all the way around and come right back to where I started from. That would be the perimeter. And if I want to know the length, I would need to add the this side, which is 7, 
plus a W, I don't know what W is, plus this side, which is a seven, plus this side, which is a W, which again, I don't know what a W is. That's the missing part, is the W. So if I can find the width, I can find how long it is all the way around this rectangle. Okay. So 28 is equal to seven times something. Seven times something equals 28. All right, that's what we have right here. Seven times W, we could call that W, and solve for W. W equals what? What number fits in here? Well, that's my W. Now I need to take that number, and I need to start here, and I need to plug it in. I, got, I know my length is seven. I'll now know my W plus my length of seven, plus my W, which I know from down here. All of this added together, okay, the perimeter is equal to the length plus the width plus the length plus the width, right? All the way around my rectangle. You can, you can do that. Now. Last one, I promise, almost done. Mrs. Vermeer sold 91 cupcakes at a food fair. The cupcakes were sold in boxes of a baker's dozen. New terminology, a baker's dozen. A baker's dozen equals 13. A dozen is 12. Oftentimes, things are sold in dozen. Donuts, cupcakes, um, toilet paper rolls. I'm not sure. A dozen. There is a quantity called a baker's dozen, which is one more than... 12, one more than a dozen. And the reason this came about is because bakers would often include one extra, okay, we're not talking about uh, uh, today, we're talking about days where customer service was really more important uh, and they, they really tried to build relationships with customers, so customer service was a big deal. They would give an extra donut in a box of donuts. They might give an extra cupcake. They called that a baker's dozen. They got one extra. Okay, it was an effort to uh, and encourage people to come back to their place of business because they gave them more for their money, for their value. So a baker's dozen is actually 13. One more than a dozen. All right. Sold 91 cupcakes, came in boxes of a baker's dozen or 13. She sold all the cupcakes at $15 per box. How much money did she make? Okay, uh, uh, let me check here. How did I have this uh, divided up? Oh, okay. I see you again. 91 cupcakes. Thirteen per box. I need to know how many boxes she sold because I know it's six fifteen dollars per box, but I don't know how many boxes were sold. So, I know that there was 13 in each box, all right? So I could just keep adding these up. 13 plus 13 plus 13 plus 13, right? Eventually, I'm going to get up to 91. Okay, they're equal. I could divide. I could do 91 divided by 13, but I don't know how to do that yet. I do know how to add 13 plus 13 plus 13 plus 13 plus 13 plus 13. So at some point in time, okay, you're going to get 13 plus 13 plus 13 equal to 91. That will tell you how many boxes. One, two, three, four. I don't know how many boxes. Okay. I don't know how many boxes. But you'll figure it out. Right? 13 plus 13 plus 13 plus 13. Okay? How much money does she make now? It's $15 per box. And you will know exactly how many boxes there are. Okay? So it'll be 15, 15, 50 per box. Or you could multiply. That's fine either way. Okay. All right. A couple things for you to do there. Uh, we laid the most out. Most of it is just now the last computational sort of thing. Um, do that on the form. Turn that form in, and we'll be done for the day. 
Good luck on your test tomorrow and Friday. See you.